Hello students at FUMEC University. I'm speaking to you tonight from the University of Calgary in Canada and at the request of Mariana. Uh, she's asked me to talk to you tonight briefly about some of the cognitive therapy techniques that have been developed for treating antisocial personality disorder. In general, I would note that treating antisocial personality disorder is one of the more difficult conditions within cognitive therapy. Uh, in fact, we know relatively little about using these techniques for the personality disorders in general, and antisocial personality is certainly one of the most challenging of all of them. To the best of my knowledge, there is currently no uh, trial that has been done that uh, definitively supports the use of cognitive therapy. However, there's no particular trial that supports other therapies either. So what we do is we do the best we can, and we of course adapt the techniques that have been used for other personality disorders as best we can. So I'd like to thank Mariana for this opportunity to talk to you, and I hope these thoughts are of some advantage to you. I would note that in tr general in treating personality disorders, we often, of course, use a schema-based approach. We would use a case formulation to try to understand the core schemas that are involved in the particular person that we're working with. We would often try to do a developmental history to try to understand these features, where they came from, some of the early developmental experiences, and then we try to share those with the patient so that he or she can understand their own personality and how it functions. One of the differences between antisocial personality disorder and some of the other uh, personality conditions is that whereas the others tend to have more personal distress associated with them, uh, people with antisocial personality disorder often actually create more havoc or more difficulty in the lives of others. Now that's not to say that people with uh, antisocial personality disorder don't have distress. And in fact, a lot of people with this condition have a difficult time dealing with distress. When they feel upset or anxious or sad or angry, they often feel the need to take action immediately rather than sit with those feelings and try to do something potentially more constructive or to learn from their own experience. So one of the general techniques that has been adapted for working with people with antisocial personality disorder is a general set of techniques for developing tolerance for or the ability to cope with emotional distress. In this regard, I'd like to mention four different uh, possible techniques or four different ideas that have been tried over time. One of these is the idea of acceptance. Acceptance has uh, generally had a lot of attention in the literature of late, and it involves taking an, a different perspective on the topic that the person has. So rather than being distressed about it, feeling like you must take action or that you must be angry or must uh, engage in certain kinds of responses to the stressor, acceptance involves taking a different perspective, learning that in fact you don't have to be upset or you don't have to take action immediately, that you can simply sit with your feelings and that that's okay. That's an acceptable response. Uh, and that can be a very effective technique for a number of emotions uh, if the person has the ability to sit with their feelings. Unfortunately, a lot of people with antisocial personality don't seem to have this capability. So while in theory it's a possible technique for working with this condition, in practice it's probably less useful than these other techniques I will mention. One of the second ones then is the idea of exposure. Exposure involves the idea of presenting the person with the emotion or set of emotions that they react to, teaching them how to have that experience, to pay attention to it, to not avoid it, uh, and again, to just generally expose oneself to that emotional experience without taking action. Uh, this could be done in a series of graduated steps. So having the person, for example, imagine a, a variety of scenarios that might elicit that emotional response and have them simply pay attention to their emotion without having to take action. Of course, one of the messages in doing exposure is that acceptance is also possible. So sometimes those techniques can be merged together. But sometimes simply exposure can be done on its own. Third strategy involves a series of possible change strategies. So even if the person becomes distressed or becomes emotional, teaching them a variety of techniques rather than taking direct action, uh, whether it would be to be angry and hit out at someone or to yell at somebody else or to hurt somebody's feelings or whatever that you know, previous response might have been. 
So some of these strategies include things like uh, just simply distracting oneself. Um, teaching oneself that when you feel distressed to purposely shift your focus of attention, look somewhere else, pay attention to something else, um, and rather than having to take action immediately. So this does involve some degree of awareness. Uh, often, again, if you're teaching uh, exposure to the emotional experience and the person starts to feel like they might do something, you could also then teach them at that time to use the distraction technique and practice it over time. Another possibility is to use imagery. Imagery can be used as a distraction. So for example, you can have the person imagine themselves in various scenarios and uh, you know that this would be an alternative way of responding to the emotion rather than taking action. You can also have them imagine coping strategies. So they could imagine rather than hitting out at someone or becoming aggressive, various things that they could say to themselves or various things that they could do which involve alternative or different kinds of strategies to what they might have done otherwise. A third strategy could be relaxation. Actually doing formal instruction in relaxation, teaching the person how to co calm themselves down rather than to be emotional. A common strategy for, that's used for people with antisocial personality disorder is also to look at the pros and cons or advantages and disadvantages of the old pattern of action, which could be, again, aggressive or hitting out or destructive in some way, uh, or injuring other people, you know, violating other people's rights, versus a new and more adaptive strategy. So this would involve some discussion about what those adaptive or more positive strategies might be, practicing them in imagination, and then actually acting them out in real life, uh, eventually getting to the point where the person can feel emotional, can feel an impulse, but can become aware of it, distract themselves, or think about one of these alternative strategies that you've talked about, and then can actually act in that more adaptive or positive way. So this technique, of course, takes time. Uh, it does involve quite a bit of um, tolerance on the part of the therapist, you know, willingness to work with the patient like this. Uh, people with antisocial personality disorder can be very frustrating and difficult to work with. So again, it does involve some frustration tolerance on the part of the therapist as well. I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I'd like to thank Mariana again for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, I will actually be down in Brazil myself shortly and uh, perhaps I'll get a chance to see some of you. Uh, but thank you for your attention to this idea.